Most of the time, weather is the biggest variable in flying. But when it comes to figuring out what the weather is actually going to do, and what that means for a potential flight, many of us have relatively little real-world training to rely on. The majority of the training experience for most pilots is in the local area focused on maneuver-based training. And so for that practical exam, you know, what you're working toward is typically a single cross-country flight, and that's essentially the, the extent of it. In this video, we'll look at the biggest weather hazards for VFR flying and basic strategies for anticipating them during pre-flight planning. Then, in other videos in this series, we'll talk about the vital skill of making actual decisions about the weather both before and during flight. The most obvious weather hazards for VFR pilots are the things that keep you from seeing. Clouds, mist, fog, and precipitation. The first thing to remember when thinking about the practical limits of VFR flying is that the weather minimums truly are minimums. Pilots sometimes forget that. Unlike speed limits, weather minimums aren't meant to be operated at consistently. You know, if you're looking and it's, it's forecasting, you know, four or five miles visibility, sure, yes, that's legal to fly a VFR, but you know, how, how comfortably are you flying in weather like that? If all of your flight training was done in you know, seven miles, 10 miles, more than 10 miles visibility, you don't really have a way of knowing what your visibility is gonna look like until you get up there and actually see it. A lot of VFR pilots would be shocked at how little and disorienting even three miles of visibility can be. Of course, even non-aviation forecasts will tell you if you're likely to experience such conditions. But a good basic grasp of aviation weather really helps build an understanding of the big picture. Let's look at some of the most important elements. Water vapor is the root of most weather problems, and the origin of the air mass you'll be flying through can give you an idea how much water it's carrying. If the air mass recently passed over a large body of water, it's probably pretty wet. In contrast, if it came a long distance over land, it's probably pretty dry. Fronts are another big picture indicator. Any frontal system can bring dangerous weather, but a warm front carries a much greater likelihood of low ceilings and visibilities, often for several days at a time. Then there's atmospheric pressure. High pressure typically means good weather, while low pressure brings a much greater likelihood of precipitation and reduced visibility. When looking at local conditions, a good way to gain insight into ceilings and visibility is to watch the temperature dew point spread. The closer those two numbers are, the more likely you are to see precipitation, mist, and or low clouds. For VFR pilots, the tipping point is roughly a three degree spread. If you see the numbers five degrees apart and closing over a series of METARs, be cautious. Finally, remember that there are visibility limiting factors other than just clouds or precipitation. Moonless or overcast nights, unlit terrain, haze, and smoke can all, either individually or in combination, be very dangerous for unprepared VFR pilots. The absence of a vis you know, visible horizon and back to the John F. Kennedy Jr. accident out over kind of a dark moonless night uh, without much outside reference, even though the visibility was perfectly acceptable and legal. Um, he experienced certainly a very disorienting uh, condition. Let's briefly cover a few other things to keep in mind prior to your VFR flight. These are snapshots of future weather over the entire nation for the next two days, taken at 12-hour intervals. If you want to know if it's going to be raining over Tennessee and Arkansas tomorrow afternoon, this is a good place to look. For a right-now equivalent of the PROG chart, the surface analysis chart gives a current overview of national weather. Another handy tool is the interactive map on the homepage of aviationweather.gov, where you'll see a nationwide view of airports reporting marginal VFR and IFR conditions. Terminal area forecasts are updated every six hours. Because they can change significantly from one to the next, it's good to know when the update is due. A new forecast coming out in 30 minutes is probably worth waiting for. It's also worth looking back at METARs to see whether the existing forecast is actually coming true. 
Air moving over terrain is like water flowing over rocks. The faster it moves, the rougher it gets. Keep an eye out for turbulence air mets, but also just look for high winds, particularly in combination with terrain. You know, you might be looking at the forecast and see that it's, you know, 10 miles and clear and beautiful, but if it's, you know, if they're reporting 15 knots of wind at the surface and 50 knots of wind at 3,000 feet, you may be in for a rough ride. Pilot reports of turbulence are subjective and vary significantly with the size of the aircraft. Remember, though, that despite the tame sounding descriptor, a report of moderate turbulence from a light aircraft usually means uncomfortable flying at best. If the moderate report comes from a corporate jet or an airliner, you probably want to stay on the ground. Sometimes, knowing certain facts about your destination can be as important as the actual forecast. This kind of local knowledge can be general, as in, thunderstorms are common during summer afternoons in the Midwest. Or, it can be quite specific, as in, the Omaha airport sits in a river valley and often fogs up overnight. It can be very valuable to gain some of that local knowledge, which can be had with a quick call to flight service, who has regional specialists who are trained experts in that field and can talk to you in very specific detail about, you know, the conditions you're going to experience. So there you sit with a ton of weather information. Building a mental picture of the weather can be a challenge, but here are two suggestions that will make it easier for you. Get a feel for the national and regional weather first, then zoom into the area your flight will cover. Likewise, start your planning early. It starts with just the kind of everyday, the worldly news, what is happening in which part of the country. Um, you know, having a good feel and understanding for that big picture um, builds the foundation. And then starting at that three to five day time range, then we just, we, get, we begin to funnel in. When you're within a day, you know, that's when you can start looking at your area forecasts, your TAFs, and really start building a, a good picture of, of what the weather's going to look like, not only at your departure airport, but also at your destination, as well as everywhere in, you know, in between along the route. Think of it like a movie. If you've watched from the beginning, rather than jumping in halfway through, it's a lot easier to see where the plot is headed. As with most things, the more time you spend thinking about weather, the easier it will become to understand. Start to pay attention to how these weather patterns develop. Start looking at forecasts, even on days when you're not going to the airport and not flying. If the iPad is in your hand every morning, find a go-to weather source on that iPad, whatever that might be, whatever you're most likely to do. Take a look at what the forecasts are saying three to five days in advance, and then see how that translates to real-time observations. And, you know, that all kind of gets banked. That all kind of gets, that, that gets banked in that experience bucket, whether you're, actually, whether you're actually flying or not. When it's all said and done, weather planning isn't about meteorology. It's about avoiding conditions that are more likely to get you in trouble. Don't overthink it. You know, you don't, you don't have to be, be a meteorologist to know that, uh, you know, you can't fly through a thunderstorm. What you do need to be able to do is, is look at the, the information that's out there. And there are a lot of you know, very pilot-friendly, user-friendly sources out there. And just be able to paint a good mental picture of what the weather is doing. There will always be tough calls. We talk more about that in other videos in this series. But most of the time, if you just get the basic information we talked about here, the choices are easy to make.